Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for your interest in the University of Toronto, Mississauga. My name is Kwame Diko, and I'm the Diversity Recruitment and Student Recruitment and Admissions Officer here at UTM. I am joined by my two wonderful colleagues, one of which will be your virtual tour guide and the other your chat moderator. I'm going to invite them on screen to briefly introduce themselves. Hi, Ariane. Hi, Kwame. Hi, everyone. My name is Ariane. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm excited to show you my favorite places to eat and study on campus. And thank you, Ariane. And hi, Michael. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm the communications manager here at UTM, uh, and I'm going to be managing the chat along with my colleagues Maddie and Neha. So if you have any questions throughout the stream, ask them in the comments section um, and we'll answer them. And we'll also take a few of them up live at the end of the stream. Back to you, Bonnie. Thank you. In a moment, I'm going to pass the virtual mic over to Ariane, who will be giving you a virtual campus tour of our beautiful, and I mean beautiful campus, highlighting the areas that are important to students. But, all, but first, I'm going to give you a brief presentation about UTM. If you have any questions over the course of the presentation, please share them in the chat. At the end of the virtual tour, Ariane, Michael, and myself will come together to do a brief question and answer period before wrapping up the event. All right, guys. I'll see you after the presentation. Yeah. The land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, this meeting place is still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. As you all may know, the University of Toronto is one university with three campuses meaning that you'll have three separate learning environments to choose in between. All three of our campuses have something unique to offer, but the important thing to remember is that all three of our locations, at all three of our locations, you'll be getting the same world-class education and graduating with the same University of Toronto degree. Now, our Mississauga campus is located in Mississauga, Ontario, just 30 minutes west of Toronto. Our community is home to around 15,000 undergraduate students sitting in the arts, the sciences, and business. As an applicant to UTM, you'll choose between 12 different admission cat categories, which can lead you to over 180 different programs, which themselves span across 18 different academic departments. What this means for you is that you have a wealth of options to choose between. The University of Toronto Mississauga has a lot to offer to students. As you can see from this slide, these are just a few things you may want to consider as you begin to think about where you'd like to continue your academic journey. First and foremost, you will be getting the outstanding University of Toronto education, which is recognized all around the world for its excellence. You'll be taught by world-renowned professors who come from across the globe to teach their institution. As a University of Toronto Mississauga student, you'll be studying at our innovative contemporary green campus, surrounded by woodlands and situated on the banks of the Credit River. Rather than expanding the campus outwards, we have continued to repurpose the space on the existing footprint of the campus, meaning that even as our, com our community continues to grow, the campus remains highly walkable and, be and surrounded by the beautiful green space of which it's protected. So that means you will always have wonderful views and meet wonderful wildlife as you walk through campus. UTM also has a variety of unique and dynamic programs, including the premier forensic science program in Canada, our theater and drama studies program, which is jointly offered between U of T and Sheridan College, and our communications, culture, information, and technology program, which is also unique to our campus. When you come to UTM, you don't just become a student here. You really become a part of our community. As a member of our community, you'll have access to an abundance of supports, of which are designed to meet you where you are supporting your transition from high school to university and ensuring your academic and professional success as a student and beyond. Finally, thanks in part to all this, we attract students from across the globe with students from over 110 different countries. We have a truly global community and we are extremely proud to have the opportunity to nurture culture, cultural diversity and build global fluency. Now, as you can probably tell, I can go on and on about all the wonderful things that make our campus and our community great. But luckily, we have the incredible fortune of being joined today by one of our current students. So with that, I'm going to call Ariane back to the screen to give us a virtual tour of UTM and talk to you a little bit more about their school experiences. 
as being a student here. Hi, Ariane. Hi, Kwame. Thanks for calling me up. So I'll see you later. Okay. So welcome to the UTM campus virtually. Um, I, as, as I said earlier, my name is Ariane. I am in my fifth and final year here on campus. So I will be graduating in June, which is very exciting. I am currently pursuing a double major in political science and French studies. I'm also a student ambassador team lead for student recruitment and admissions, which is part of the work study program. I can talk more about that later. Today on my virtual campus tour, I'll be taking you through all the buildings on campus where I typically grab a bite to eat and where my favorite study spots are. So up first, let's head on over to the Kinef Center and Innovation Complex. So you're probably wondering, how did I choose to study political science in French? Well, my career goal is actually to become a lawyer, and I applied to law schools back in October. And when you're applying to Canadian law schools, you can actually pick any undergraduate program of study that you're interested in. So I took political science and French studies courses, and then I applied to be in those programs. Uh, one of the courses I had to take was Poll 114, which is Politics in a Global World. So this is a very popular first year course. And as you can see on the screen, KN137 is one of the courses that it was held in. It's a medium sized lecture hall, holds about 300 plus students. Next, we have the Office of the Registrar, which you can also find in this building. You can find academic advising supports, financial aid advising. So for example, um, if you were qualify for the Ontario Student Assistance Program or any other loans that you have, uh, any assistance you need with managing loans, the financial aid advisors can help you. And you can also find general student success supports. We also have the Ask Registrar platform. So if you have any questions about your studies, you need to connect with the Office of the Registrar. You just uh, fill out a form on the Ask Registrar platform and they can set up an appointment for you or just directly provide you with the answer to your question. So Student Recruitment and Admissions is a division within the Office of the Registrar. I mentioned earlier that I work as a student ambassador team lead. And what I do is I help brainstorm initiatives where we engage with our prospective students and applicants, which are you folks in the audience. And part of what I do in my portfolio is something called On the Road with RENP, which I did recently. I'll talk more about that later. But you can find that on our Instagram at ETM Future. And then we also have the Tour Ambassadors program. So if you were uh, visiting us physically on campus, you will be uh, given a campus tour by a current student, which is kind of what I'm doing now, but in person. So you'll find that many of the buildings on campus are connected. So let's head on over to the Davis building. So this is the William G. Davis building. It opened in the 1970s. And the exterior of the building that you can see, as well as inside, which is the Davis meeting place on the top right, that was actually recently renovated and it was completed in 2019. So what you can find in here is the Center for Student Engagement or CSE. I worked for the CSE in my second year as a peer leadership coach where I facilitated UTM lead workshops. Essentially, there are a series of leadership seminars where students can gain skills outside of the classroom. If you participate in activities like this, you can earn a notation on your co-curricular record. The CCR is a document that summarizes your involvement throughout your undergraduate career. CSE also organizes a lot of events for students, for example, academic department orientations. These are part of Eagle Orientation, which happens around the first week of September. They provide you with resources that you can leverage to have a successful first year. And this was really helpful in my experience. You can also find the Career Center and they organize mock interviews, resume critiques, and LinkedIn profile critiques. These resources help you uh, find jobs on or off campus. And of course, we have the Experiential Education Unit as well. So if you're looking to gain experiential learning outside of the classroom, they offer uh, this program called the Research Opportunity Program or ROP. So I've taken part in two ROPs throughout my undergrad. 
One of them was in French, where we learned about the individual differences in third language acquisition of grammatical agreement. So essentially using my knowledge from French linguistics, I took part in data analysis and manipulation. We looked at Mandarin, Arabic, French, and English. And the other um, ROP that I took part in was in political science. It was research on homelessness in Canada. We looked at French and English literature on articles and books written about homelessness. And I used my knowledge from my Canadian politics course. Um, just in February, reading week, actually, I went on a trip to Victoria, BC as part of an RRP on a similar topic. It was about the history of housing in Canada. So here I got to visit Victoria, BC, as you can see on the screen. And I was able to talk to service providers. I was able to talk to the mayor of Victoria. And I learned a lot about what is needed to, um, to help figure out the issue of homelessness in municipal and provincial levels. But for now, let's head on over to the Recreational Athletics and Wellness Center to learn more about the athletics facilities. So the Recreation Athletics and Wellness Center, or more commonly uh, referred to as the Rock, it has a department where they encourage students to move their way to wellness. So they offer a variety of fitness, sports, and wellness programs for all skill levels. So what you can find in these facilities, um, there's strengthening uh, fitness equipment, um, strength and conditioning center. But I actually rarely use the facilities for workouts. I mainly participate in drop-in sports such as badminton and table tennis. So as you can see on the screen, here's myself and my sister. Uh, playing badminton we're very beginner but it's still really fun because they welcome everyone from all skill levels and it's just a really great way of adding fitness into your day-to-day -day undergrad experience if you're wondering about um, membership fees that's already included in your incidental fees in nutrition and you can ac access the facilities using your student card or your t-card there's other cool programming the rock offers some of which are learn to play where they teach students how to play a sport uh, in the summer they teach tennis there's also stand-up paddle boards. So their facility includes an indoor eight-lane swimming pool that has paddle boards and they offer freelance and structured classes. They also have UTM walks, which is a year-round walk around UTM's nature trail. They also have women's only programming. So women's only hours, for example, where a portion of the gym is closed off and only those who identify as women are able to go. They also offer women's only drop-in sports. So for example, uh, when I mentioned badminton and table tennis earlier, they have women's only drop-in hours. So only those who identify as women are able to partake in those activities. So that's it for the rock. We're now going to be heading to the CCT building. So CCT stands for Communication, Culture, and Technology, and they're home to the Communication, Culture, Information, and Technology programs. So some of the programs are Digital Enterprise Management, or DEM. This is a program that teaches students about digital technologies for business management. They have professional writing and communication, which allows students to explore written narratives and publishing. And their newest program is Technology, Coding, and Society, which allows students to study computer systems from a social sciences and humanistic perspective. So one of the lecture halls that you can find in this building is CC 1080. This is one of the two largest lecture halls on campus, holds a maximum of 500 students. So in your first year, you're going to be having a lot of large classes ranging from 100 to 500 students. And that's because everyone in their first year is taking pretty much the same prerequisite courses. As you get into your programs in your upper years, that number tends to decrease. And you also have uh, tutorials and practicals where you have smaller class sizes and really allows you to apply the concepts you learn in your lectures. Um, next, we have the UTM service desk. So this is where you can actually uh, set up your T-card and your Utrano email. So the T-card is your student card, as I mentioned earlier. If you are planning on living on residence, they load the meal plan on there. Um, if you want to use the printing services on campus, you can actually load some money on your T-card 
and then you get uh, able to swipe it, treat it like a debit card. And of course, we are in exam season right now. So if um, when they're taking attendance during exams, they actually scan your T-card to make sure that you're present. As for your Toronto email, this is how your professors will contact you. So they don't like using Yahoo, Gmail, or those other um, popular email websites. You are supposed to use your mail.utoronto.ca address. Okay, let's go head on over to the Hazel McCallion Academic Learning Center. So this is the Hazel McCallion Academic Learning Center, which houses the UTM library. So again, we are in exam season. So fun fact about the library is that it's open 24 seven. So if students, for example, wanted to pull an all nighter, not that I recommend it, um, they are able to, and then they could even uh, get a boost of caffeine by buying Starbucks, which is just right across the library. So this is a really popular space to study in. So a lot of students study here. During um, exam season, it's really busy, especially the study rooms, very hard to book in advance. I usually recommend that students book it a week earlier. So these are the study rooms that you can see on the screen. You can see that there's um, a TV in there. So if you wanted to practice a presentation, for example, you could make use of that. If you wanted to, if you're someone who typically writes out your notes while you're studying, you can borrow a um, whiteboard and uh, sorry, you can borrow markers to use with the whiteboards and just you could just have all of these resources that you can use either to study alone or to study with your friends. So this is the information and loans desk. So you can borrow a lot of items that you may need here. For example, a calculator if you're in a math course. Um, I've also taken a um, sec in second year, I took a French film course and my personal laptop does not come with a DVD player. So I had to borrow an external DVD player, which I didn't know I could. And um, I also borrowed the film itself. So I was able to do all my work in five hours, which saved me a lot. <laughs> but now let's head on over to the instructional center. So this is the instructional center, or we students refer to it as IB. This building has no academic departments affiliated with it. It's full of lecture halls and lots of study spaces. So what you can find in here is IB 110, which is the other largest lecture hall, also holds 500 seats. An example of a course that you might find in this lecture hall is Social 100, which is Introduction to Sociology. But if you are planning to be in a program, for example, life sciences, business, or uh, computational and mathematical sciences, you are most likely going to have to take a math course. And some of the math courses are held in this lecture hall as well. Uh, you might also be writing your midterms in, these, in this lecture hall. What else you can find in the IB building is the shuttle, the UTM shuttle bus that takes you from IB to Convocation Hall downtown. So I've actually been taking elective courses this year at St. George. So the commute is really not that long outside of non-peak times. So uh, for example, it's taken usually 45 minutes to an hour, but if it was peak time, the longest it's taken me is an hour and a half, which is not too bad. It's also paid for already within the incidental fees in your tuition. So you don't have to pay additional fare every single time you use it. However, this feature of it being already included in your tuition is exclusive for UTM students. So if you are a St. George student, for example, and you wanted to make use of the shuttle that takes you to UTM, it will, you will have to pay a fare every single time. There's of course a lot of amazing food options available in this building. You can see Subway and Quesada on the screen. If you like burrito bowls, you can go to Quesada. I really like bento sushi personally. I've been ordering donburi and poke bowls this past year. So I'm really excited because I'm gonna take you to my favorite building. So let's head on over to Manjue and the Moen An. So 
Now you're probably wondering, what does the name mean? Well, it has indigenous origins and it means a gathering of minds. So this name was chosen to reflect the partnership between the UTM campus community, as well as the indigenous peoples that live on this land. So the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations actually has an office here, and these initiatives reflect the ongoing partnership. One of the things that they've held recently, an event is the All Nations Powwow, and a lot of students attended that, and it was really beautiful and really cool way to learn more about indigenous culture. The academic departments that you can find in here are political science and language studies. So those are actually the departments for my programs. I'm a huge advocate of going to professors and TAs office hours or teaching assistants. They're super helpful. I have a great way of reviewing the concepts. And also it's just fantastic to build professional relationships with your professors. There's also the Robert Gillespie Academic Skills Center. Great resource for essay writing and forming your study skills. So if you wanted to book an appointment, for example, with an instructor, you can actually get help uh, for any stage of the essay writing process, whether that's brainstorming or revising a final draft. They also organize facilitated study groups or FSGs. So what happens in FSGs is that outside of your lectures, tutorials and practicals, you have another resource. So these FSGs are facilitated by students who have pre previously taken the course and have done well in them. And what they do is they can't provide answers, but they can equip you with the uh, academic skills that you need to do well in the course. And, you know, it's really great because they give you chocolate just for showing up. And I love chocolate. And I became an FSG leader uh, in the fall semester as well. So I really, really speak highly of the FSG program. It's available for a lot of first year courses. So something to consider if you're here in the fall. So one thing to know about UTM is that a lot of films and TV shows get filmed here. So in 2019, they filmed Zombies 2 and 3. Uh, Zombies 3 was during the pandemic, but they filmed Zombies 2 in 2019. And this is the set that they had for the MN building. So they called us Seabrook High School. And that film is available on Disney Plus if you want to check it out. Everything was super colorful and it was really fun being able to take uh, guests to across this building. Another thing that you can find in this building are active learning classrooms. So instead of a traditional lecture hall like I showed you earlier, where you have the professor at the front and rows of seats, these ones facilitate collaboration. So the professor is in the middle. And if you're familiar with smart board technology, the perimeter of the classroom is equipped with them and students are sat in groups and there's a microphone on the table so that if you wanted to participate, you don't have to project your voice, you can just speak into the microphone. So that's why this is my favorite building because I've never seen classrooms like that before until, until I had a course in this building. So there is another building connected to MN and that is Deerfield Hall. So when Deerfield Hall first opened, they had a naming contest and they took submissions from everyone in the community. A staff member actually suggested Deerfield Hall because it reflected um, the nature of our campus. And look at that. There's lots of deer that you can find here on campus. No matter how long you've been here, if you are just a visitor or if you're a longtime staff member, everyone always stops in their tracks just to take pictures of the deer. A resource that you can find in this building is the Math Learning Center. So I took Math 133 in first year because I was initially in the Commerce program. I found it really difficult, but what helped a lot were the teaching assistants that were in this center. They have their office hours in here, and it doesn't matter if they're the TA for your course. Uh, other TAs can try to help you clarify course concepts. And one of my profs actually held drop-in study hours in here just to help us with homework, with quizzes, or guide us through assignments. There's also lots of study spaces available, as you can see on the screen, whether you're looking for cubicles or just uh, more casual laid back couches that you can study on. There's even study rooms that you can book for meetings as part of a club or to study with your friends or to work on a group project. And of course, because we UTM students love our caffeine, we have two Starbucks locations on campus. And the second one is found in Deerfield Hall. So if the 
for the location in the library is busy, you can always line up in Deerfield Hall. And now let's head on over to the Student Center. So the Student Center is the hub of all student life on campus. What you can find in here is the University of Toronto Mississauga Students Union or UTMSU. They organize FROSH or Freshman Orientation, which is a really great way to meet peers within or uh, outside of your programs, as well as upper years who can guide you and be your mentors on campus. They also hold free breakfast Wednesdays. So if you're looking to save some money or you're running late for a class and you don't have time to grab breakfast, you can always go to their free breakfast Wednesdays. And recently they also organized the undergraduate research symposium. So students who are conducting research can actually participate, present their research to anyone on campus and they actually get prize if they win. So there's lots of clubs and academic societies that you can find in here. There are over 120 plus uh, student groups on campus. I am a general member of the Filipino Student Association because I'm Filipino. And because I'm interested in law, I'm also a member of the pre-law organization. If you have really unique interests, for example, if you're a Swifty or a Taylor Swift fan, they do have the UTM Swifty Society. And if you can't find a club that suits your interests, you can always start at one of your own. And just because you're a UTM student doesn't mean you're restricted to clubs at UTM. You can also be a member of clubs at the St. George campus or the Scarborough campus as well. The student center is connected to the Blind Duck Pub where you can buy food and um, cha time, which is bubble tea. So if you really, really love bubble tea, for example, I love the pearl milk tea, you can buy from cha time. And then the Blind Duck Pub uh, caters to a lot of dietary restrictions. So vegan, vegetarian, kosher, halal. Um, my personal favorite is the mac and cheese bites. They also organize pub nights. Uh, this held by the UTMSU and sometimes clubs. For example, they have a Halloween pub where people get to dress up and just have a good time together. And then they also have the haunted house in here. So many students commute to get to campus. So there is the My Way bus terminal pretty close to the Kneff Center and as well as the Student Center. You pick up your My Way U Pass from the Student Center. However, I have heard that it is going digital next year, so it could be through an app. Um, you would be better off contacting the UTMSU because my U pass was physical and I would show that pass along with my T card to the bus driver. It saves me fare every single time um, because I've already paid for the U pass in my tuition, so I don't have to pay fare every single time. So that actually brings me to the end of my campus tour. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, before we do end off. I do want to invite Michael and Kwame back. Oh, it's nice to be back on the hey. big screen. <laughs> Thank you, Ariane. And uh, so, Michael, how was the chat? Uh, chat was pretty quiet, I will say. Um, so, first off, yes, Ariane. Thank you very much for your tour. Um, I, I, I actually have a question uh, for you, which I'll get to in a second. Um, and then your presentation got me thinking of asking Kwame you a question as well. Um, but before we get to that, I want to build some suspense here. Um, so we had some questions in the chat. One of them, let's see. Oh, by the way, I should say, um, if you're watching and you haven't yet asked a question, um, ask them now. We, we have a, a few minutes here uh, and we're going to take your questions up live. So ask away and we'll get to as many as we can before uh, the stream ends in about half an hour or so. Okay, so um, I have a question here uh, from Adam, and I want to focus on uh, the part about Adam. Uh, this is my first time going to university, very anxious. Uh, how do I set up schedule? How do I set up student loans, financing? Not sure what to do, not sure you know where to start. So um, Kwame, can I give that off to you for now? Absolutely, absolutely. And just in case I forgot to say that, I want to say thank you, Ariane, again for the for the presentation. It was awesome. Um, Adam, wonderful question. I still remember my first days as a student when I started at University of Toronto, and I was very anxious. I was a commuter student, so I commuted through the subway, and I never, I, I wasn't sure how to set up my schedule, where to go, or who to meet. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge your feelings. It is 
normal and it is okay to feel that. One of the great things that our office does and my, myself, Michael and Ariane do is talk to students about their feelings and about their anxiousness or their worries. So let's tackle the first one. How do you set up your schedule? Your, your course enrollment schedule is set up through what is called ACORN, which is our student services account. You pretty much go there for all thing regarding your education, from finance all the way through course enrollment to program enrollment. If you don't know what program enrollment is, we'll talk about that later. Uh, you will receive an email through your UToronto email account, which all students get, letting you know of your course enrollment date and time. You will then need to first map which courses you want to take by visiting our academic calendar or our program page. Uh, and then you can and then you could use those to and alongside a program called degree explorer to sort of build you a mock time uh, timetable from there when your enrollment date and time comes up you log into acorn type in either the course title or the course code and enroll into it it's as simple as that so of the things i mentioned of note is number one it's okay to feel nervous number two you will receive an email stating what your course enrollment date and time is and number three well before you get that email, or after you get that email, you could go onto our academic calendar or our program page to look up what courses you may be interested in. And now student loans, which is the second question. So student loans are heavily dependent on the person. It's a very subjective question. The best place to start to set up student loans is to give our office a call and speak to one of our recruitment officers or our admissions officers. If you maybe don't want to do that until you're on campus, you can actually book an appointment with an academic or and or financial advisor to go through it. Simply put, student loans are, you may or may not be eligible for student loans, but it is the student's responsibility to initiate that process either through our Ontario Student Assistance Program or through loans on your own, uh, through your own connections or through banks and such. So unfortunately, I can't speak too much about student loans because it's very subjective, but what I will do is encourage you to call the office, reach out. You can ask for me or Aria if you'd like, and we'd be happy to tell you a little bit about student loans as it may specifically relate to your circumstance. In case I missed anything, Aria, can I throw it to you? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say um, something to note about university scheduling as opposed to high school scheduling is that you actually have the autonomy to set up your schedule however you like. Of course, it will depend on when the course is offered. But let's say if you're not a morning person, you could choose to have afternoon and evening classes if you like. Or if you want to be done earlier in the day, then you can opt for morning and afternoon classes. Of course, it, again, it depends on when the course is offered. As for the student loans part, um, I'm a domestic student. We have the Ontario Student Assistance Program. But if you're an international student, for example, we have the, um, there's the international student scholarships. There's scholarships that you can apply for. If Maddie or Neha can link the Awards Explorer page, that would be really great. It's a great resource to show you all of the scholarships available um, at all three campuses. Uh, and you can even filter it to however you like. And it's just a great way. Oh, and work study program. So I'm in work study that's um, really flexible. So they, in, they ensure that you're able to balance your work responsibilities as well as your academic responsibilities. So you're scheduled for a maximum number of hours per week. I think it's about 12 hours per week and it's a great way so that you can balance your work and your studies at the same time. Sorry. I am so glad you two are here. That was a proper rounded answer. Thank you very much for that. And thank you, Adam, for your question. Um, let's go. This is, a, this is an easy one. And I may take one of those easy ones. And then I'll give you all the more challenging ones. Here's a question. It's actually also from Adam. Is this the same, Adam? It might be. It's sparking free. Hey, Adam. No, it's not. It's not free. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. If you carpool, there are discounts if you, if you carpool with somebody. So that's an easy one. OK. Um, here's one. This is another kind of concern that we get sometimes around this, this time of year. Uh, so Seaway says, um, should I be concerned if my grades have dropped during the last semester of school? Good question, Seaway. Kwame? OK, Seaway, thank you for asking it. I would like to uh, validate your emotions the same and your feelings the same way we've done for Adam. Yes, uh, this is a normal concern and it's okay. Um, I had the same concern, if I can speak for myself, uh, when I applied to the University of Toronto. Um, so should you be concerned? Um, 
my go-to answer to always ease the minds of students is no, not yet. So it's highly subjective. And if you are concerned or you have questions about maybe how much your grades have dropped, uh, feel free to call our office. Like I just stated, it's very subjective. It's on a case-by-case student. And when we do student advising, um, we really try to get to know the student before we provide an answer, just so we can make sure we provide you with the best answer possible and an answer that's completely applicable to your situation. So should you be concerned? I wouldn't be concerned yet. It's, it's okay. The first thing you can do if you are concerned is to call our office, speak to Ariane or myself or anyone that is on the phone. We'll look, we'll look up your profile. We'll talk, we'll look at your transcript. You can tell us a little bit about what's going on and we will do our best to give you the best answer possible. So summarize, it's okay. Don't be too concerned. It happens. Uh, this is, this is normal, right? Grades are not static. They fluctuate over time and that's okay. Yeah. Ariane, I'll throw it to you in case I miss any. Oh no, your answer was perfect. Yeah. I wanted to add um, just one thing is your offer letter will often also say um, it, it depends. Some offer letters are specific and some of them are a little more general. Uh, but I would say also to double check your offer letter to see if there are any variances that are accounted for um, with your grades. So that might help you. Um, I, okay, see me again. I, 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 I saved another question from you. Um, Ariane, you actually covered this in your tour. Um, how often, well, kind of, how often do students travel to the downtown campus? Often is the keyword. Okay, well, it really depends on the student, actually. Yeah. Well, if, and this is not, like, the, using the shuttle bus is not restricted to taking courses downtown. As um, one of our chat supports did mention um, in reply to the same comment, um, you can use the shuttle bus even to just visit downtown Toronto if that's how you want to commute there. Um, for me personally, this year, I took two courses downtown in the fall semester and then two courses this semester. So I was commuting to the downtown campus about three times a week. Um, and then that's, that's essentially, that's how it is for me speaking from personal experience. In previous years, I was just at the UTM campus. So it depends on you. So often really depends on how you build your schedule, what you want to get out of your experience. Um, yeah, that's all I can share from my experience. Yeah, I, I can add that um, it it you can go your entire UTM uh, time, sorry, time at UTM without ever going to St. George. You know, all of your clubs will be at UTM. All of your classes and courses that are at UTM. All of your friends will be at UTM. Everything you'll do could be at UTM. So there's no requirement to go to St. George. Um, many students won't um, as part of their their, their schooling. So. Um, okay, thanks very much, Siway, for your questions. Um, here's a simple one, but I think we, we get this often enough that um, I think it, it warrants getting put up here. Um, so Nikki says, does my degree include the campus that I study in? So I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to the diploma that you get when you actually convocate, when you graduate, um, because they're studying at UTM, uh, and then there's obviously the St. George campus, there's the Scarborough campus at U of T. So, Ariane, what does your degree say? What does your, your diploma say? It will say your name, that you graduated from University of Toronto, what degree you got. So if it's honors Bachelor of Arts, Bachelors of Science, that will be stated on there. But it does not say what campus you get it from. We get nope. this concern all the time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Very straightforward. It just says U of T, because that's what we are. We're U of T. Um, let's see here. So Sydney asks, uh, good evening from Trinidad. Uh, is there, are, are we giving any tours during orientation um, to help uh, new students find their way around campus? Either of you want to take that? Uh, do you want me? Are, you? Are you? Please go ahead. I can take it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So there's... There's... <laughs> Everyone's so polite and Canadian about this. You go, no, you go, no, you go. <laughs> Okay, I'll take it. Um, okay. There's two ways that you can go about this. Um, if you'd like to do a campus tour with our office, we do offer campus tours all year round. So anytime that you want to visit our campus, you will be available. You can just sign up through our website. Um, but also as part of orientation, I believe the Center for Student Engagement also organizes their campus tours, also held by a current student. So it will be included as part of orientation or you can do it with us. There's really however you would want to do it. 
Um, I want to plug something else that we're doing for campus tours. Uh, next month in May, we have evening tours. We're calling them twilight tours. So there are four dates in May. Off the top of my head, I don't know what they are, but they are on our website. Um, so if you are able to join us in May for even in the evening time, we can do that. And then also in May, um, if you're considering living on residence, residence is hope, uh, hosting a, a, an open house on May 13th. And they're also going to be offering tours on May 13th as well. Um, so just want to do a little plug um, for our colleagues who are running those events in May. Thanks very much for your question, Sydney. Uh, I want to take one second and ask, uh, Ariane, you mentioned during your tour, the Swifties Club. Are you like the president? Because I would imagine you might be. No, unfortunately, no. I'm not even active because the times didn't work with my schedule. But I found that they had a club because I had a peer who was in one of my courses. And she was like, I have, I have a Swiftie Club. And I was like, no way. So when the Eras tour kicked off for Taylor Swift, they had a celebration party. And they watched one of her um, movies. It was either the Reputation concert or um, the Miss Americana documentary. So it's just yep. to celebrate that the tour kicked off. So it's just a way to bond with other Swifties. I'm not the <laughs> president, though. <laughs> if you run, you, you could be president. You um, could be president, yes. OK, so here's a question. Um, can I study commerce in at UTM in first year and transfer to the Rotman Commerce program, um, which is at the St. George campus in second year? Kwame? Okay, so for questions regarding transferring to other campuses, first and foremost, I should say thank you for the question. It's a really good question. Second, I should say that it, we always do our best to direct students to the program in which they wanna study. Uh, to, co to contact them for information because they would have the most up-to-date information. Transferring programs between different campuses is not unheard of and it's something that does occur. We do have a, a transfer explorer and a program or a process for transfer students who are interested in transferring. Um, the answer to your question may be a bit more complex than uh, than the question itself. It is definitely possible to transfer, but there are there are some prerequisites as well as some information that maybe would be better suited to a phone call between us and between you and our department so we can explain the subtle nuances but as a whole it is possible to transfer programs at UTM between or between one of the University of Toronto campuses. Yeah I, I would say I'm 99% sure that this specific example I don't think you can transfer to Rotman Commerce in second year. Um, there are a few programs, even at UTM, computer science is one of them, where you can't transfer into computer science at UTM in second year. Um, I think Rotman Commerce also has that policy. Um, but yes, double check, contact Rotman for sure. Thanks very much. Okay. Okay, so here I have a question. Um, from Ashvika. Ashvika asks, uh, does being a part-time student, I'm assuming currently uh, during, if you're in high school right now, taking only two day courses, does that affect your chances of acceptance? Kwame? Great question, Ashvika. Thank you very much for asking it. Uh, being a part-time student does not affect your chances of acceptance. Uh, our, our, our acceptance guidelines or our general admission guidelines are located on our website. And, we, and generally, we want to see your transcripts and the courses that you've taken during your time in high school. So um, please do not worry, and it, and it does not affect your chances of acceptance. We go by what's denoted on our admission guidelines, which uh, make no mention of, of, of the mandatory enrollment full-time at all. So your space is as you can. Yeah. Thanks, Shreka, for your question. Uh, next up, we have Paula. Uh, and maybe this is for Ariane. Where, since you're like a, a, the resident expert here, um, <laughs> where can I obtain more information about the work study program? So, for our campus, you can check out the UTM Career Center. Maddie and Neha, I'm going to say a bunch of stuff that you can probably link in the chat. So, the Career Center, they offer work study program info sessions. Um, with work study, there are specific requirements, so you can check out the Career Center. They do have a page on that. Um, to apply for work study uh, jobs on campus, we use the Career Learning Network, or CLNX. So that's actually how you apply. Some uh, positions ask for your co-curricular record, which I mentioned throughout my presentation today. Um, but really, you can 
just start with those two resources if you want to learn more about it. And then once we see you in the fall, we can provide you with more information. Pretty straightforward, yeah. Um, thank you for your question, Paula. This off here. Oh, another question. I have another question here from Paula. I, I'm like pairing up a lot of these questions, aren't I? It's, it's totally by accident too. Um, straight and simple. Does a shuttle bus operate on the weekends? Yes, I'm pretty sure it does. Um, but you can check out the UTM shuttle bus schedule. Um, you can also link that somewhere in the chat. They have uh, specific schedules for different times of the year. So for example, fall, winter runs on a different schedule. Exam season runs on a different schedule. Um, on weekends, it also runs on a different schedule. But it does run, but you can check out that in more detail with a link in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, th by the way, thank you, Maddie and Neha, to you in the chat. I know you can hear me. I know you're not on camera, but thank you for answering uh, in yes. the chat. Thank um, and thank you, Paula, for your questions. I have a question here from uh, Erica. Erica? Erica. Uh, so if I'm in need of residence, um, since I'm an out-of-province student, but the deadline has passed for guaranteed residence, which, by the way, was March 31st, what are my next steps in acquiring residence? Um, we, this morning, a few hours ago, we were in a meeting, and we were just talking about this. Kwame and I were in a meeting talking about this. So, Kwame, answer? <laughs> Great question. Um First and foremost, this is not uncommon. It's okay, Erica, this happens to the best of us. We miss things sometimes. Uh, second, uh, very direct answer to your question, it would be very good to reach out to the Resident Services Help Desk, or their, uh, it's called resdesk.utm at utoronto.ca is the email. Uh, either Maddie or Nail will link it in the chat. Reach out to them right away and let them know that you missed the deadline and you would like to obtain residence for the upcoming year. The residence team is very understanding and they will do their best to accommodate your needs as much as possible. Uh, we cannot give a straightforward yes or no answer yet uh, because this is a different department, but we, all of our departments work together to ensure students are supporting and we do the best to, to serve their needs. So please, uh, if you have the time and you can do it after this, uh, after Discover Day today, please email residence application. Uh, I want to add one thing, which is, and this is because I spoke to somebody who works in residence just today, just for you, Erica. Uh, I knew this was coming. So the, the answer that I got is if you've missed the, the deadline, apply anyway. Um, there are steps uh, throughout the process. So the current step that we're in right now is called step two. So go to the residence website and just apply. Uh, what you would have missed is the guarantee that's available until the 31st, but residence is still open for applications. So uh, the advice from residents on campus here at UTM is apply, apply, apply. Sooner than better. Sooner than later. Thank you very much, Eric, for your question. OK, next up we have uh, Sydney. Oh, Sydney's back. Um, so Sydney asks, <laughs> I'm not doing this on purpose. Yeah, you know, I'm not. Um, Sydney asks, if you're not accepted to your preferred program initially, at the end of the year, I'm going to assume in a first year, you're still interested in transferring to that program. How would you go about doing that? Uh, Kwame? Let's do it. Wonderful question, Sydney. Thank you so much for asking it. This is probably one of my most favorite things to explain to new students. Admission categories versus programs and program options and designing your degree and all the options that are available to you. So first and foremost, let's start with admission categories. You're, if you're not accepted into your preferred admission category uh, at UTM, we have, you will have uh, time to select your program of choice. At the end of your first year, all students will have to, will be requested, not have to, but be requested to declare their program of study. This provides an opportunity for students who have decided, mm, I'm more interested in philosophy rather than psychology, or I'm more interested in sociology rather than uh, computer, uh, computer science to declare a different program. But there are caveats with that. It, the reason why your first year is so flexible is because it allows you to take courses that are uh, specific to your admission category or your, your preferred program of study, but also outside of your program of study. In my first year, I was a psychology specialist. I took some philosophy courses because I was interested in it. And then I transferred to philosophy. I declared my, my, my philosophy program uh, <laughs> not too long after that. So it's totally flexible. And, and one of the awesome things about UTM's curriculum design is that it allows for you to have options and to switch and design your degree as needed, as I mentioned that before. 
So when it comes to your question, uh, yes, you can totally switch into that program as long as you have the prerequisites for that program. Um, and that was sort of the last part in the caveat that I mentioned. Some programs require you to do some prerequisite courses in your first year, which usually are foundational learning courses. Uh, they're usually open to all students. So as long as you meet that requirement or any other requirements denoted on the program page, you can totally apply to your program of choice. The, and I know I've talked a lot and I'm so sorry, I'm excited about talking about programs. So I will say <laughs> <laughs> the best place to look uh, if you have access to Google, just Google UTM academic calendar, and then they'll actually give you the list of programs that UTM offer, their prerequisite courses and what your first, second, third, and fourth year will look like. So. If you have any further questions, I am happy to answer them. Um, um, please call into the office. I could talk about this for hours, but Cliff Note is yes, UTM calendar, academic programs, or visit the future.utrl.ca program page. View, review the program requirements, the courses needed, and then take them in your first year, and then you can switch. Yeah. Did I miss anything, okay. Ariane? Okay. Okay. Answer. No. No, I don't think so. Um, thank you, Sydney, for your question. I hope that was uh, that was helpful. Um, there's a there's a part B uh, that was actually asked by somebody else. And does this change uh, if you're an international student um, transferring program? Does it is it only for domestic students? And the quick answer is no, no. Um, if you're domestic, if you're international, you're out of town, you're you live across the street. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. Um, <clears throat> Here's a, here's a fun question, um, Ariane. Uh, you mentioned UTM campus was used as a film set. Did this result in any unique uh, opportunities for UTM students? So it depends on how you define unique opportunities. <laughs> so if you're thinking of being an extra on the set, I, as far as I'm aware, that was not an option. But I do remember um, one time one of the actors for Zombies 2, his name is Milo Mannheim. He was walking around campus and one of the students actually met him because she posted it on Instagram. So, you know, you might run into an actor and actress if that's what you consider a unique opportunity. But I yeah. don't think you can be an extra on the set. Yeah, unfortunately. We all try, but, but they <laughs> stop us. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did say, I will say that I... Uh, I got. I saw um, Colin Farrell at the Scarborough campus a few years ago when they were filming the Total Recall reboot um, at UTSA. Uh, I got to see him from a distance. So that was pretty fun. Um, thanks for your question. Okay, so I, I will do a time check. We got a few minutes left uh, until seven. Um, I also want to say, if your question hasn't been taken up uh, in the stream, um, we we did. I will say that we have noticed some of the questions are very specific to um, your um, individual case. Um, so Kwame did say that there's there's sometimes the questions are very, or the answers can be very subjective. So sometimes we're, we, we can't answer some of the questions that you have about your individual admissions processes because we have to look you up. So I would say contact our office and we'll, we'll help you um, after looking up your, uh, your file. So let's, uh, I have a few more questions here before we wrap up. Um, me one second it's just loading up on the side here uh, i have a question while we wait then um kwami ariane already mentioned her favorite spot to eat uh on campus and, and getting donbury and getting so what would you say is your one of your favorite spots to eat on campus so uh i am very cost effective with my bank account so <laughs> so i usually go to tim hortons and uh the tim with if anyone internationally doesn't know Tim Hortons, the coffee chain that we have uh, here on pretty much on Canada and the US, and they offer you apps on your phone where you can get things like free coffees or free donuts, uh, depending on how much things you buy. And we also have something called a roll up the rim, where it's almost like a scratch card game you could play, where if you buy a coffee, you may win a free coffee or win a free donut. So there have been times, uh, I'm ashamed to say, where I've gone, bought a coffee, rolled up the rim and won a donut and went right back into line. <laughs> my donut. <laughs> well, you got to so check because then you can have that donut with the coffee and that's the whole point of the trip, right? Logic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, that's, that's living it smart right there. Um, 
Okay, so I found this might actually, depending on how we do in the chat, this might actually be the last question. Um, so um, Sarah asks, are first year courses kind of pre-selected for you? Or are they chosen for you? So for example, if you um, got into life sciences, um, are they pre-selected for you? Who wants to take that? Uh, Kwame? Ari, yeah, Ari, Ari, Ari. Oh, okay. Ariane. Oh, okay. Ariane. Sure. to you. Sure. I wasn't in life side, but I am a student, so I can do this. <laughs> so basically, when you're in your first year, or let's before even the first year, let's do the summer before first year. Um, I will say the office of the registrar has course enrollment workshops, and you can also look. Uh, what's it called? I think it's a career center who has the program plans. So they basically list what kind of courses you could be taking in your first year. Um, they're most likely going to be mandatory for your first year program. And because you talked about life sciences, I will tell you, you are going to take bio, you are going to take chemistry, you will be taking calculus for life sciences. So that's just some of the courses that you have to take. Um, I think Kwame mentioned earlier the academic calendar. So that is also going to be listed there, all the first year courses that you have to take. They're chosen, they're not really chosen for you, they're listed as mandatory prerequisites. But as I said earlier, you can choose what times you wanna take them. So whether yeah. you're a morning, afternoon person, afternoon, evening, you can design it in that way. Um, that's my best advice for you. But I know LifeSci tends to have a lot of courses that you need to take in the first year. Great. Yeah, go ahead. I will just add by saying one of my first experiences in being a student in university was not knowing that I had to enroll in my own courses. So it's a great question. I thought the courses were selected for me. I learned that the day of course enrollment. So great question. You're already ahead of the curve for after. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I want to do some, we're, we're hitting an hour, but these questions are coming and I really want to answer them. So I'm going to do some, a quick fire round. Okay. Quick fire round. I'm going to answer a few quick fire ones. Um, you're in HBSC. Can I do a double major in psych and English? Yes, that's, yes, you can do that. Great. Um, <laughs> are there any resources for international students if you encounter problems later in the cycle while you're a student? Yes, the International Education Center, Robert Gillespie Academic Skills Center. I, I, I can just keep going, but I said rapid fire. There are many, many resources on campus for this. Courtney says, uh, you don't have to wait, Courtney. Call me my answer this now. What's your favorite <laughs> donut flavor? Boston cream. Around. Boston, Boston cream. cream. There you go. Um, and then something a little more, maybe a little more serious. If you choose, if I choose, so uh, Mama says, if I choose to defer my acceptance, would I still retain all of my awards, my entire admission? Do I still have to pay uh, my deposit? So yes. So as long as you uh, meet all of the conditions of your offer, um, you get to defer your admission for one year, and that does. Uh, uh, mean you get to retain any scholarships uh, earned uh, with your acceptance uh, and do you still need to pay the deposit? Yes, because paying the deposit counts as one of the conditions you have to meet before you're eligible to defer. Um, and okay, final, final question. And I think this is a nice one to end off of is Ariane and Kwame, what advice would you give to your younger self. And I will say that only because also, Ariane, you're in your last year, you're graduating very, very soon. So it's perfectly <laughs> timed. And I think this will be our last question for the evening. Okay, I will start because I have it ready. Um, a motto I always say to myself, especially when I feel like things don't work out the way I want them to, is what's meant for you will never pass you. And one thing that I didn't get to share in my presentation today is that I actually applied to UTM for commerce because I really thought I wanted to be a business student. Um, but as I took my courses in first year, I learned that I don't want to be a business student. I want to be a political science and French studies student. So I was able to switch programs. I am the poster child for switching programs. It happens. It, it can work out for you in that way. And for me, I'm actually glad that that's the path I ended up in. I really love the courses I took, all the opportunities I was exposed to. And looking back at my first year self, I think she should be part of the journey that's going to be ahead of her. That That's lovely. I don't want to add anything. I want to leave it at that, wrap it up with a nice bow. Um, thank you very much um, for that. Um, so I'm going to thank everybody for answering or asking questions in the chat. 
Um, it's we're coming up to the end of the show, so Kwame, I'll give it over to you to uh, to wrap things up for us. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ariane. And and this brings us to the end of tonight's event. Um, as I said, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ariane. But the biggest of thank yous for all of you attending with us from wherever you are around the world. Uh, we appreciate your time, and we're so happy to spend time with you. Uh, I would like to invite you to a couple of resources. First and foremost, if you have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to our office. Our phone number, website, email, and social media handles are now posted on the screen. Um, and I have two quick reminders, or three quick reminders for you. The first being, we have Twilight Tours. This, these are very cool campus tours that are happening in the evening to ensure that everyone and anyone can attend. I will be on two of them, so I would love to meet you if you are able to make it out. Number two, double check your offer letters. We are coming up to that time where you will need to make a decision, accept, defer, or refuse admission into the University of Toronto if you've received admission to it. Please pay close attention to the offer letter deadline or the, uh, or, or the offer response deadline. It's super important that you respond in time. And number three, we will be having an Ask Me Anything session next week. I believe this is going live via social media Instagram, I think, my perfect Instagram, where you will be able to speak with a student uh, just like you spoke with Ariane today and ask questions. So please feel free to attend. I'll also be there. I'm super excited for it. So deep breath. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We appreciate you. Uh, it was so great to see your questions. If you have further questions, reach out. Have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are. Thank you so much. We can't wait to see you at UTN. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.